Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the new key bomb, Mr. Brad Pauls, following split draw at the weekend. How are you doing, Brad? Yeah, I'm I'm okay, mate. Um, I'm a little bit sore. Um, and yeah, mixed emotions really. I'm not really happy. Uh, I'm not overly sad. Sort of a strange one to take. Uh, but yeah, here I am. I know throughout the week, many people spoke to you, were confident going in there against the British champion in Nathan Heaney. When that bell rung, sort of where were the emotions? Did it all sort of live up and feel like how it was going to feel? Yeah, I felt um, a lot calmer than I've ever felt. I felt a lot more relaxed. Um, I think that's the most and best prepared I've been for a fight. I took it very seriously. Um and the the occasion didn't get to me like it has done slightly before, say, the Denny fight. Um, I felt like that experience really helped me out in this situation. So, um, yeah, one of those ones. One of those ones. Do you think those performances and those experiences against, you mentioned the fight against Tyler Denny there, they're all in the bank now for you. And we have saw we saw a, a top performance on Saturday night and... With those in the bank, there'll be more to come. Yeah, and I genuinely, I feel like I'm coming into my peak. I'm improving. Um, I feel like the experience I'm getting is invaluable. The, the the fights on the big shows, and the more I'm doing them, the better I'm getting. So you can look at the difference from the Denny fight to my last fight on Saturday. You can see I've improved. You can see I can handle. You can see whole aspects of my um, my setup have got better. I've got a nutritionist, I've got a mindset coach, and all these little percentages are starting to add up to make me an all round better fighter. And I genuinely feel like I'm getting better and better, and I feel like I can get more titles without a doubt. Let's get into the fight itself. As those rounds were sort of ticking by, let's say at the halfway stage, how were you feeling? Did you feel like you were on top at that point? At, at that point, at the halfway stage, uh, stage, I feel like maybe I, I lost a first couple. Um, I feel like he set the pace quite high. Um, but respect to Heaney and stuff, but none of the power was really bothering me at all. I didn't mind walking through what he had. Um, and by that stage, um, I was, I think, closing the gap on Nathan. Um, he wasn't really putting a dent in me. Um and I started to close him down. And as the more I did that, the more he wanted to be on the back foot and constantly move, move, move. Um, and yeah, and then from round six onwards, I feel like I come into my own. I closed the gap on him and I started to to get more success. So just one of those ones. Those later rounds, did you say there, you were having a lot more success. Was that sort of part of the game plan to, we know Nathan's a, a fairly big puncher. If you can get through those early rounds, you can come into your own, you can use your engine, you talk about the nutritionist and that'll all come into play later in the fight. Yeah, I feel like the game, the game plan for the fight is obviously Nathan's taller than me, he has longer arms than me and he can happily sit off and try to pick me apart all 12 rounds and that we didn't want to happen. So we, we knew we had to pressure him and take something away from him and really put it on him. And um, yeah, I feel like I just, I've got Nathan's number. I feel like if we boxed again, I would do better. Um, I'd love a rematch. Um, and it's, it's just one of those things. There's a, there's a few different aspects of the fight we could talk about, but um, yeah, I'm just getting better and I'd, I'd, I'd love a rematch. A lot's been made of, I'm sure you're alluding to it there, the, the gum shield falling out three times in the fight. Do you believe that it should have been deducted a point for that? Um, Honest opinion, yeah, I do. Um, I've watched a little bit of the fight back today and it's funny, man. So the, the first time when the gum shield came out, it took him eight seconds to put it back in. It's quite fast. Uh, and the times he was hurt when his gum shield come out, Took him about 18, 20 seconds to get, to get it put back in. Wonder why. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a funny one. I always thought the rule was if it comes out three times, that's one point. Um, I know I wasn't getting any favours being the away fighter. Um, 
and always seemed to happen just when I had him hurt. How convenient. Um, and that's boxing. That's just one of those things. I honestly, I honestly, I'm, I'm not bitter. Um, I feel like I could have had a point for te- for holding. Um, times I had him hurt, he was holding on for dear life and wouldn't let me work. A few times. Um, but you're the UA fighter, so you know how it goes. Um, if the shoe was on the other foot, would it have been the same? Mm-hmm. Um, so here we are. So here's me with Raw, not the title belt around my waist. Uh, and that's boxing. When it came to that time where the decision was being announced, did you feel like you'd done enough? Yeah, listen, I've boxed 21 years. I've had a lot of wins, I've had losses. And when you're in there, you get, you, know, you know the feeling. You can feel if you've lost or not. You know how it feels. You're in there. I didn't I didn't feel like I lost Saturday night. I didn't feel beaten. I didn't feel like I'd lost at all. But I'm also not stupid. I understand. I'm the away fighter. And he sells a lot of tickets. And in them situations, they do me a favour. I know that. They didn't even show my ring walk. Um, so, yeah. So, um, when, they, when, when they're calling the, the scores... Um, it was nice to see some judges were fair. Um, I think when they gave me it two rounds, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I I didn't feel like I'd been beaten. I felt like I'd won inside. Um, and what else can you do? And you've mentioned it a couple of times there about being the away fighter, sort of walking into the Lions Den with two thousand plus fans from from Nathan Heaney, Nathan Heaney's side. When you've got that amount of fans screaming for the fighter and you are the away fighter you, obviously he's with Queensbury he's with TNT how difficult is it to to sort of get those extra percentages those extra marks and points yeah I feel like there's only so much you can do like within your control I can physically prepare the best I can I can promote myself and I can do this and that but if you're the away fighter there's not a lot you can do in them situations that are going to add you that percentage because he's already got those percentages before the fight had started. And some things you can't really like, you can't help that if he lands a jab on my gloves and everyone cheers and I land a clean shot and it's quiet. I can't help that. That's the way That's the way of boxing. But um, we knew that when we took the fight, we were taking it as the away fighter. Um, so I didn't want to make it close at all. Um, but yeah, here we are. And uh, a draw. Do you, do you felt like you, you dealt with the, the crowd noise and the booing and everything that comes with it quite well? Yeah, honestly, like, genuinely, it didn't really bother me. Um, uh, it, it, was, it was different and it's all energy and it was the atmosphere was good. Um, it just didn't really bother me. Like, it's, it's fine. I had my 150 there and believe it or not, they were quite noisy. A lot of the times when, when Heaney's lot had gone quiet, um, he wasn't doing so well. My uh, my support was noisy. So um, yeah, um, is what it is. And final one on the fight. You mentioned about a possible rematch. We we've seen a fight of the year contender on on Saturday night. Is that very realistic? Is there any discussion about that had already? Um, we mentioned it to him straight after. Um, and all honesty, the the vibe I got was it was probably a no. Um, I don't imagine I'd want the rematch. If they did, I'd in a heartbeat, I'd bite his hand off. Um, but whether they do it or not, it's a different story. They might have other plans. I just, um, I hope I don't get left. Um, I'd, I'd like another shot at something or, or something else. Um, going back to small hall would be difficult. Um, but yeah, if if they offered it, then, you know, um, it's always yes on my part. Yeah, the the shot would be fully deserved for sure. Um, I know Frank mentioned in the lead up about if Heaney does get the win over yourself, moves on to world titles. Do you, is it sort of a feeling that that was set in stone? Yeah, I, I I do feel they must have had already planned another fight. I think it's the summer they were talking about it at the Stoke Ground or something like that. They'd already had it. Pre-planned, they were presuming they were just. I was an easy touch. And they were going to walk through me. I told them I wasn't. Um, they didn't listen. Um, so they were thinking ahead. I don't think Nathan was. I think Warren and maybe other management teams, stuff like this, was. I don't think Nathan was. 
think Nathan prepared his best. Um, so yeah, they they've got other things on their in their plan, and I don't know if I fit into that plan. So it was a real late start on Saturday night. You talked about the the ring walk not being shown for yourself. How how did that make you feel? Um, it's new to me. I've never boxed that late before. I'm normally asleep at half ten, <laughs> so it's it's weird. <laughs> It was a bit. It was a bit weird. Um, I, can't, I can't say it affected me or it did or it didn't. I don't know. Um, I suppose Nathan was in the same boat. He started just as late as me. Um, but it's just what it's one of those things. Would have been nice to start earlier. Um, but whether it affected me, I don't know. Honestly, uh, someone you've mentioned during the interview is Tyler Denny. He's got. A fight coming up with Felix Cash, who we haven't seen in the ring for quite some time now. Um, Tyler's had a, a real rise since he since he beat you, really. Um, what do you make of his rise, and how do you see that fight going? Um, you will give Tyler credit; he's he is a good fighter. Uh, respect Tyler, um, and he's done what's asked of him. He's he's beat everyone put in front of him, um, and. Obviously, I fought him for the English title. I think he's more than proven he's higher than the English title level. Um, yeah. Him versus Felix. It depends which Felix turns up. Um, we've seen Felix through the years and he's been really good. And we've seen other times he's, he's been different. So it depends which Felix turns up that night. So I suppose we'll see with that one. Do you feel like the inactivity could be a big factor? Yeah. Oh, I can't think last time Felix boxed, to be honest, so it's not going to help him. No. Um, another one for you is Hamza Shiraz. He's sort of moving towards those world title honours now. Janabek's been mentioned as a route. I know previously Chris Eubank Jr. has been a, a name linked with him for, for quite some time now. If you were sort of in his shoes, making those sort of decisions, which way would you go? Honestly, if if I was Hamza, you think more money might be with Eubank, and it would be an easier fight, in my opinion. Um, Janabek is a very very difficult fight, and I'm not sure if the money would be similar to the Eubank fight. So, Eubank first, then Janabek after, uh, would make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good position, and that's probably what I'd do. And for yourself, you've now got a few days off to reflect on the weekend, take it all in, and what, yeah. fingers crossed we, we do get the rematch? Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I've, like I said, yeah, it'll be a yes on my end, or um, I'd love the rematch, or whatever's next, see what happens. But I'd like to be active, and I'd like to fight soon. So um, something good, hopefully. Something good comes from this. Hopefully, mate. Well, really appreciate your time, Brad. Take care. And uh, yeah, from my end, fingers crossed we see the rematch. Mate, thank you very much.